Dino Dipper, Knight's Quest, Merlin's Challenge. Whatever you call it, in 15 years, this ride has seen more themes than many rides see in their entire life. However, this latest theme was not expected at all, but it has honestly done more than you think. Let's have a slight closer look while I say why Merlin's Challenge is better than the themes that came before it. When Dino Dipper arrived at Legoland in 2005, it was part of an expansion to the Adventureland area along with Dino Safari. It changed the area from a small and limited themed land into a complete area with four different rides in the Jungle Coaster, Wave Surfer, Dino Safari and of course Dino Dipper. But when Legoland wanted to expand and build hotels, the first casualty for this was the Jungle Coaster, being the first step of the change from a minor prehistoric theme to a more aquatic theme. Then Dino Dipper had to move for Atlantis Submarine Voyage, but that's a story for another day. For 2011, Dino Dipper had moved to a previously empty piece of space in the Knight's Kingdom, next to Dragon's Apprentice. However, there were minimal changes to the ride, with the pterodactyl Lego figures in the middle replaced by a castle tower, and the addition of themed announcements to tie the ride into the Knight's Kingdom, something it didn't have as Dino Dipper. I was never upset or annoyed by this, but apart from those two changes, it was blatantly clear the ride had previously existed in another guise. No real issues, but would have been nicer had it changed a bit more. Although nine years is a long time, it didn't feel that long, and in 2020, without any forewarning, the Knight's Quest had changed, and was now Merlin's Challenge. The difference is clear right from the start, and this was because of the new ambient music. If the ride was in operation, then there was another great soundtrack that truly went with the pace of the ride. The new announcements are even better than the last set and really work well for the ride. But even better was the fact that the ride vehicles had been repainted. Something so little that does so much. The old yellow goldy colour worked great for Dino Dipper and Adventureland, but it never worked for the Knight's Quest and Knight's Kingdom. So it certainly fits in a lot better now, and I for one am very happy with this small change. I was thoroughly surprised when I saw these changes for the first time on opening day 2020, but I was overjoyed. I love Merlin's Challenge, as it certainly feels a lot better than its predecessor, and reminds me of how I felt as a child riding Dino Dipper for the first time. This change and the update is indicative of Legoland's work throughout the 2019-2020 close season as they did general work and upgrades to the aesthetic of their rides in lieu of a new attraction. To sum up, I would say that Merlin's Challenge is the best version of the ride since it opened in 2005. If you haven't given Merlin's Challenge a go yet, why not? It's great fun and truly enjoyable for all ages. You'll love it! So, have you taken on Merlin's Challenge yet, or are you waiting for your first ride? Do you prefer Dino Dipper, Knight's Quest, or Merlin's Challenge? Comment down below and share your stories, I always love to read them.